This compilation of three movies shows you the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly, the gorgeous and talented caterpillar of the spotted tussock moth, and three dainty blue butterflies that you might have overlooked. More's the pity. Next to the monarch, perhaps the best known butterfly in the States is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. So what if he's common? Nothing wrong with giving this large, lovely, garden variety butterfly a closer look. How would you describe the fabric of these wings? They look as stiff as canvas, but they don't droop and billow like canvas sails, they're taut. Maybe like a kite or a lady's fan? A butterfly's wing is actually a thin layer of chitin, a hard, semi-transparent substance covered by thousands of tiny scales. And notice that only the top pair of wings flutters. The shivering and clapping of the four wings are part of the butterfly's balancing act. He clasps flower petals with his six tiny clawed feet. Effortlessly keeping track of where all six of his legs are, he steps from one flimsy blossom to the next, stabbing each with his proboscis and sucking the nectar. He sups right side up, upside down, sideways, and everything in between. Sometimes teetering so that he has to use his wings to restore his balance. And all the while, he's using his compound eyes to scan for predators in every direction. Watching matters because the butterfly can't hear. He's aware of sound only to the extent that he feels vibrations in his feet and the hairs on his body. These paragons of elegance don't move with silk and grace, though. They jerk. Twitch. Lurch. Flick. And dazzle us with their grace. Their erratic flight prevents predators from guessing where they'll be next. After all, if they want to show off their colorful finery, they'd better be good at evasive action. The way they whirl and gambol around each other, you'd think they were dancing for joy. But in fact, their brains are probably too small for that emotion. The whirling dervish act is courtship. It's not territorial fighting because eastern tiger swallowtail males aren't aggressive toward each other. If there's a group of them, it's several males looking for a female or trying to impress one. Since the females will only mate once, all the whirling, whether in groups or in pairs, is a way of saying, pick me. And if that seduction is only an evolutionary imperative for them, that's okay. Thank goodness our brains are developed enough to delight in watching them. Flutter by, butterfly. Let's not forget that those beautiful butterflies and moths come from beautiful caterpillars. And here's one of them. This caterpillar's forebear encased itself in a chrysalis and as a pupa transformed itself into something so utterly different that it's like changing from a brick into a ballerina. The metamorphosis is disappointing when it comes to color because the tussock moth that laid the egg which became this caterpillar is 
Yes, delicate, but dull compared to its incarnation as a creature dressed for carnival. In fact, she's named a tussock moth for the white lashes growing in tufts from each end of the caterpillar. They are the spiky finishing touch on a snazzy samba costume. Truth is, though, that all that caterpillar wants to do is eat, so she can grow enough to develop a chrysalis and pupate in turn. She's an eating machine, mowing row after row of corn on the cob. For crawling, these caterpillars have three sets of real legs in front. Those are black. And then on each segment behind that, a pair of flesh-colored pro-legs, as they're called, that don't have joints but are just suction cups for holding the caterpillar in place. When she crawls, she looks like a train that knows how to samba. Yeah, she doesn't nail every beat, but she looks the part. Even to understanding that flamboyant feathers alone are not enough. You've also got to show some skin. As pupating time nears, the caterpillar dances more. What she wants is to make it to cocoon state without being eaten by a bird or, worse yet, colonized by a wasp. Some wasps lay 80 or so eggs on a caterpillar so that the hatchling wasps can consume the body fluids of their host. And caterpillars are averse to that fate, as you can see, and this one has, at least for the present, fought off her attacker. By tomorrow, she may be in a cocoon. In 2013, a tornado struck our property, destroying much of my husband's garden. At the time, he had been reading Doug Tallamy's book, Bringing Nature Home, which makes the case that putting in native plants is best for our environment. Tallamy promised that if you build a native garden, the local pollinators will come. So my husband has planted only native since then, and the pollinators everything from Brobding Nagian to Lilliputian, have swarmed around, including the three blue butterflies in the following movie. They're too tiny to be a big deal, but they are a precious small gift of nature. You could get your eyes permanently crossed if you spent too much time watching these pale grayish-blue inch-long butterflies whooshing around like balloons with the air let out. Now, unlike bees, they will rest placidly for long periods of time, leisurely sucking nectar or feasting on nutritious bird poop. That they'll give half an hour to. But as soon as they take off, they start ricocheting off the air. So unless you've looked closely at these butterflies when they're perched, you've likely registered them only as pale dots dancing in front of your eyes like sunspots, and then gone. They're small, easy to ignore. And even when they're on a flower, people usually overlook them. Like I said, they're small. And not brilliant like a monarch or an eastern tiger swallowtail. But if you can get a look at them from six inches away, you'll be impressed with the delicate colors, the crepe paper scalloped edges, and the fringe of fine feathering on the edge of the wings. And if you get several of those good, close, six inches away looks, you might eventually realize that some of them have cute little tails and orange spots at the rear. Others of them don't have tails or orange spots. The planar specimen is a spring azure butterfly. His fancier cousin is an eastern tailed blue. 
Except that sometimes he isn't what you think he is. If he looks just like an eastern-tailed blue but lacks the black freckles, he's a gray hair streak. The tails on this gray hair streak, when a breeze buffets them, look like they're riffing on a drum set. All three species like to settle inconspicuously on a bloom and dine in peace, often for several minutes at a time, well, unless a rude bee or skipper knocks them off. But look at this one hold his ground as a honeybee nudges his underside. Hey buddy, I'm not through here. Move your impertinent nose out from under my rear end. Like other insects, they prefer native plants. In their case, Ageratum, Coreopsis, Asters, Joe Pieweed, Black-Eyed Susans, to name a few. Oh, and butterfly weed, of course. A five mile an hour breeze, something we'd barely notice, tilts and buffets their dining room table. More than 10 miles an hour makes it seem like they're clinging to the wildest of carnival rides. But the butterflies are unperturbed when their perches whip around beneath them. <sighs> These creatures look as if they're suffering seizures every time they take to the air, so sitting a bucking bronc while they eat lunch is no problem. And if the weather is calm and the perch gently swaying, the two look-alike butterflies often rub their back wings together as if they're scratching an itch. Hair streaks and eastern-tailed blues are the only butterflies that do that, and we can't be entirely sure why they do. One theory is that the shuffling movement, along with orange eye spots and tails that at a glance look like antennae, would divert a predator's attention from their vulnerable foreparts to their back ends. As a bird grabs mistakenly for the rear end, the butterfly might escape in the other direction. Indeed, you can see that this one's front wing is so torn that the dark gray of an upper wing shows through the snags. The dark gray indicates a female. Males have blue on the tops of their wings and are somewhat smaller than females. But let me get back to my point, though. Those raggedy edges on her wings might indicate a close brush with a hungry goldfinch. And maybe that's how this eastern tiger swallowtail lost the point off his left rear wing. But maybe the eastern-tailed blue's tattered wing just resulted from a close brush with the foliage she bounces around in. Butterfly wings are delicate, and few of these insects survive even two weeks of adulthood without wear and tear showing on their wings, which are just sturdy enough to last for the two to six weeks of a butterfly's lifespan.